Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for stopping. We appreciate GSC having us here. Uh, my name again is Malcolm Keefe from Cal Poly State University. And this is Kevin Cooper. We're professors and we teach printing to university students in California. And um, our, one, among our specialties are focusing on lean printing for packaging. And so we're going to talk a little bit about lean printing for packaging. And so let's talk what is this whole lean management or this lean philosophy. And, and it is indeed a philosophy and set of tools that are used to help reduce waste and improve customer value. And it really was developed um, as a production system for a company. Many of, uh, know of it as the Toyota production system. And the Toyota production system, of course, is Toyota's internal system by which they focus on reducing waste and improving customer value. It was really developed over a long period of time. A lot of people think that uh, Lean just was, is a program that was developed in a short window of time. It's not true. It was actually developed over many, many years. And so there's techniques and tools and processes to help identify what customers really value and ultimately eliminating those things that are non-valued, which we call waste. Um, it also has a very strong people component, a lot of employee empowerment and, and uh, efforts to improve production. And so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Kevin for a little bit, and he's going to tell you a little bit more about Lean and specifically how we apply it in printing. Thanks, Malcolm. Yeah, I'll do the next few slides and then turn it back to Malcolm for the closure. And one of the things we like to talk about when we talk to companies and talk to employees about Lean is the the concept of being lean as opposed to doing lean. Um, lean is a collection of tools and it's really easy to grab onto one of the tools and use the tool to make your business better. Um, but lean is much more than that. And lean actually involves changing the way you manage, changing the way you view your business um, and changing the culture of your organization. When we talk about waste, and, and Malcolm really defined waste for us, that, that, that waste is anything that doesn't add value. So it's a very simple definition. Printers historically think of waste as scrap, as what they throw away. Um, they think of uh, what goes in the waste bin or what isn't sent to the customer as, as waste. But Toyota and Lean Thinkers actually define waste in a whole different way. Um, extra human effort or motion is defined as waste. Um, if you have to walk somewhere to get instructions, if you have to walk somewhere to, to get a piece part that you need or a, a tool that's defined as waste. Having less inventory. Um, inventory is defined as waste. Um, if you look in the back of your warehouse and you've got stacks and stacks of sheets of paper or rolls and rolls of paper that you, you've paid for, they're taking up space um, in hopes of using on some future job, lean thinkers would call that waste because you've got something you've paid for, you've committed space to it, but you're not actually using it. Um, reducing cycle time is uh, a sample of um, um, trying to increase the value add. Um, using less space, using less visual distractions, using things only when they're needed. You know, those are examples of, of uh, you know, ways of driving waste out of your business. And, and the nice thing about waste and, and the nice thing about value is Value in a lean organization is defined through your customer's eyes. So just because you do something that you think adds value to a process or adds value to a product, it really doesn't add value unless your customer agrees that it adds value. So you're looking at your value stream externally through the eyes of your customer. If your customer doesn't want to pay for it, then internally you should think of it as something that probably isn't adding value that you should be seeking to reduce. We talk about the house of lean, it's shown here. There's a few things at the very, very bottom of that diagram that we think are foundational. Um, empowering your workforce we think is foundational. We think it's important to do before you truly get out and try to become a, a lean manufacturer. Team building, addressing your culture we think is foundational and important to do. Um, and then 5S, which many of you have probably heard about, and I think we have a slide coming up on it. But those things build the foundation that we feel are important to get a strong foundation in Lean before you branch out and start doing the actual activities, the actual tools. This book is about um, setup reduction, which as you can see is on, it's my far left on the slide, it's your far left as well. Um, you know, one of the tools that, that holds up the, the roof of the house of Lean. And, and all of those are important tools and doing those will make you more Lean. But we think it only really is an example of being Lean if you build it on a strong foundation to start with. 
these are SS you've probably seen of a uh, sort set in order, straighten, shine, standardize, and sustain. But it's a it's a means of, of getting your workplace into um, a set of conditions where you can really begin to see and make major inroads to improvement once you've gone through the five S's. And we'll go back to Malcolm real quick for, to close this out. Thank you, Kevin. Um, we appreciate GSC inviting us, and we've prepared a, a GSC edition of our book, Setup Reduction for Printers. So why do we focus on setup reduction? We focus on setup reduction for the purpose of improving value. Um, and we try to improve value so that, uh, because we know that setup or make readies are not high-valued activities by our customers. And so um, if you take a look at this next slide, I think you'll find out that um, many of the things we do, um, we, in our make ready time, are not really all that valuable to our customers. I mean, things like wash ups, color matching, waiting for stock, mounting plates, machine problems, changeovers, those are all things that we do as part of our business, but they're not things that customers highly value. And so by putting emphasis on identifying those things and trying um, to, in fact, reduce those items are very critical. And so we actually um, have a 10-step process um, that we've outlined. Each chapter in the book is, a, is one of those 10 steps, and it basically involves benchmarking your current make ready and looking to then ensure all your external tasks are moved um, uh, or are done externally, and then any internal tasks can be moved to external. And then really focusing on those setup tools and fasteners, those things that take a long time for adjustment, um, and then putting the tools close by in an orderly manner. And then the five through 10 uh, steps are basically using positioning registration aids and then focusing on trying to reduce the eliminate uh, adjustment or being able to make the adjustment in one shot. Trying to use parallel setup processes when, when we can. And then basically coordinating a make ready and uh, then ultimately mistake proofing the process. Um, we appreciate GSC very much because we think they bring some interesting things to the table in helping this thing. And um, so just, just the last slide here is focusing on how do you minimize time and waste in formulating inks? Well, we know that the ColorSat is a great dispensing system to help minimize that color uh, match time, uh, or excuse me, to, to help minimize basically the time that you're used in formulating those inks. Um, we have a perfect proofer at Cal Poly, and we love uh, our perfect proofer. Uh, Integrity Engineering brings some interesting things, uh, we believe, because it's the closest process to matching what's happening on press. And we know that, uh, especially in the packaging world where brand colors are so critical, those brand colors have to match when we go to press. And we spend so much time actually uh, using our press time for basically color matching. Well, that's that's really an internal activity that should be an external activity. We should those that should be done coming to press with uh, very minimal adjustments happening on press. And the perfect proofer is the the closest uh, device that I've seen that can allow us to match the uh, replicate the very the variabilities that happen on press. And then of course the ink management system from GSC being able to track returns and actually then you reuse those returns in future uh, formulations, we think is, is very critical. So we think that GSE uh, Integrity Engineering brings some very interesting things in this area of, of lean uh, thinking, lean production. So we wanted to just give you a very brief overview. Uh, we appreciate the time, and I think uh, we're going to take some questions, if there's questions from the audience, and then uh, we're also gonna do our drawing.